talking to experienced recovery conversations. Um, in lockdown three, we've been talking to a lot of people who, who are actually doing stuff in, in, in lockdown. And we've talked to a few of the guys and girls that are employed by local authorities and trusts and things. And I thought we needed to talk to an independent. So I thought I'll, I'll dredge through my little black book and I'll find somebody that I've got some connections with. So I'd like to introduce you to Danny. So Danny, tell us who you are and what you do, mate. Well, it's, uh, those who don't know, I used to work for this gentleman by <laughs> now, back in the uh, mid nineties. Um, my name is Danny Lingiri, so I know me as Danny Badham. Um, I am a former international basketball player, rugby player, coach, consultant, and uh, executive. And I've moved sadly <laughs> out of the sports industry into filming movies, TV for major networks. Excellent. And um, what's, what's your greatest claim to fame from a TV point of view? Because it's a really good story. Um, oh, there's a few actually there. Um, I was teaching in London uh, rugby and fitness in a park and a dog interrupted the session. And I bent down to uh, pet the dog and he started licking my face. And then I see all my students and players look standing up going, I look around and it's Tom Hardy, the actor. And he says, uh, dogs know good people. Um, from then on, I starred in a uh, TV series in front of 9.8 million every week and then crazy followers and being shared, although my own personal page is not a lot, crazy followers and pages around the world and film premieres with Disney to all the superhero stuff. So that's probably my claim to fame. Mm, no, it's brilliant. And, and we go back a long way. I was trying to work it out. I think it was 91, 92 that that you did some basketball work with me for summer play schemes. We just changed the face of summer play schemes using basketball and, and your passion for the sport. So I guess that type, all that activity you just described, most of it had to stop in lockdown until obviously the guidance changed. So what have you been doing to, I guess, make a living, to engage and to do the stuff that you love so much? So one of the things when we flew back from LA and Fiji doing the sports charity that I run and filming, um, we flew through LA, we did China, Kenya and South Africa and still didn't catch it. Um, <laughs> we flew into London and I, I sat there, we conformed to what we were required to do. Um, I did live in the north at the time um, and I returned to my hometown, which is Worcestershire and the Malvern Hills. And I sat there and thought, you know what, I have no excuse in not keeping fit. Mm -hmm. um, and I started training on my own uh, with bags, with equipment. Couldn't buy any, purchase any equipment. So I started feeding up one of the huge North Face bags with an old uh, a boxing pad and started carrying that around and inventing drills. Um, and by end of September, I had 39 clients. But remember, I'm not a qualified personal trainer. I'm a guy that's been a lecturer in sport, mm -hmm. a sports science student, an international athlete and coach. So I was doing stuff that, to at the time just keep people active positively yeah. mentally um having worked in as, as an ambassador for mental health and suddenly i was finding myself thrown back 24 25 years into sports development we did rugby we did basketball i did track and field on the park in the local thing i went and bought all and to this day i've bought all my equipment off facebook because mm -hmm. you can bargain so i bought weights i do all the stuff that i've learned and trained with um, basically kept everybody sane as well as healthy. Yeah, yeah. So it's that that whole training for sport bit. It's not necessarily a PT session, as you see. I'm not a qualified PT, but it's using the drills and the training that you know so well through being an motivation and inspiration. That's what they all said. Yeah. said I mean, you, you'll laugh because you've known me for a long time and and you've seen the ups and downs of my life. But one of the kids and one of the mums said, "You're Danny Badham. Why would I not send my kid mm. to be healthy?" during lockdown yeah i had one to, i was doing one-to-ones without even the word one-to-one -one was even the phrase came in yeah. i was being just sensible about mm. it um because people were panicking but do you know the biggest thing that kept me afloat during lockdown when you suddenly take on a couple of nurses right. and they buy you this ah. mm. this must be unique mm. for at the time yeah temperature gun to get there and i was temp testing everybody I was researching myself. I feel like I was back at university mm. and I was researching and the gun kept the whole thing afloat. Yeah. Everything. 
Yeah, no, it's really good. We, we actually purchased one for the hockey club that we run just to give the parents and the kids confidence that we were doing everything we could in order to protect them. But, you know, you've got some great stories from the stuff you've been doing. You actually said you're working with a couple of nurses, but the one that I really enjoyed was the, the lad with autism, I think, that yeah. you're working with, who's really come out of himself as part of the exercise. The dancing, the dancing's amazing. He was a dancer, he was in music, um, and, and, I, and I, I think a, a lot of personal trainers, and you, you know my views about being younger or older, you still have to have some experience of engagement. Mm. You have to, and that, that's my opinion. But this kid, his mum had spent thousands on personal trainers, blah, 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 guidance. This kid sees me two, three times a week, one-to-one. -one, so I'm in his bubble. He's mentally yeah. healthy. So I can actually he's dancing. He's lifting weights. He's skipping. He's playing basketball. He's having an understanding of the rules because with autism, you can, you're able to take on complex, you are complex ideas yeah. of you must do this because their brain works that way. Um, and he's been amazing. And it's an inspiration for me. I mean, one day we trained when you could do your six and I'm sat in the van with the tunes on, with the gazebo in the middle of Victoria Park in Malvern. Mm. And he just gets up and he starts dancing. And next to me, you see, we're all sort of going, this is a child who'd lack confidence, mm. would get bullied at school. He turned 18 only last month. Right. But he would get bullied because he has the mental health age of a 12-year-old. But this guy's very good at dancing. Right. He's learning how this concept goes of basketball movement. And biggest for me is confidence. Right. Yeah. And, that, and that's the, the bit that I guess we're, we're very, we're not realising that we're missing so much, are we? Because those, that physical activity gives you that ability to socialise, to share, to, to do something with people who've got a shared love for you. And, and we are missing all that piece. And I know you've put some posts on recently about mental health and mental health awareness and things. And, and it's, a, it's a really interesting piece because I have a fear it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, if I keep telling Olivia, my daughter, I think you might have a mental health problem as a result of COVID, she's going to have a mental health problem. And it's that right. balance. How do, how do we sort of build their resilience without worrying them about there might be a problem? Um, through research in sport many years ago for me it was we have a big fear of failure in, mm. in, in things and we have a natural trait you and I could jump off a two three foot wall but we're going to instantly stop going well what if I twist my ankle that's the fear that's mm. it, that's the safety mechanism we have so I looked into that and looked at the mental health issues and and sadly as, as I spoke on a previous podcast about mental health I've been there David mm. yeah I've, I've been there and, and it was a big, deep thing, and I had to own up to it. I couldn't hide it, and it was nothing to do with my, my, my former partner, but you're in that environment. Yeah. And with the mental health aspect, I can understand a lot of people's views. Um, and, and I will say, for those who stood in the darkness, I can help you from the shadows. Mm. Yeah, because I, I, I honestly believe, and yes, there are younger ones who can um, talk about it, but if you haven't experienced it, Trust me, mental health affects people in so many ways. Mm. That fear of failure, that fear of loss. I mean, my biggest way of dealing with it is I look back on my previous experiences. And I used to, uh, David, you knew my mother. I used mm. to say, what would my mum say? What would my mum say? And, and that is it, because when we were children growing up in the 70s and 80s, we'd have to pick ourselves up. Mm. Yeah, and, and with what goes on mental health at the moment, it's... The, the gym issue, I always say to people, men used to go to the gym to maintain their bodies or look good for the other half or sport, mm -hmm. right? Women have a huge issue with their fear of being judged. That becomes a mental health issue. Then they start reading magazines. Then they start being influenced by everything else. And for me, that experience was like, it has to be a confidence, a confidence issue. Mm -hmm. um, and I tell them, no mirrors, no selfies, just smiles. Mm. And I'm the only one to take a selfie, which is hilarious because they get wound up. <laughs> but to help people out, the big thing is for me is that they have to not have fear. Mm. Yeah? I've been in those countries where we don't have fur. They don't have furlough. They don't have uh, the universal credits and the aid and the support. But they still have to carry on, even mm. during this time. So I look at the fact that there are people worse off than us. But mental health, I always say... You can fix cuts and bruises, but mental health takes a lot, lot longer. Mm. 
And so, and that's why I try to endorse and try to embrace any other influence from people. So like on the group, I, I talk about, look, yes, it's great to have a course with that. And one person said, yep, they were, I was totally right. But another person said, it is good to have indicators, people who can actually recognize what is going on. Then they pass them on to the next person, which is the more qualified. Mm. So no, it's it's a huge thing for me, mental health. Yeah. So that's part of, I think, what the future holds, but I'm quite interested in your Barefoot project. Um, what, what's the future hold for Barefoot? How are you, how are you progressing in, in Fiji? Well, so it was the big thing. I mean, last year could have killed off the, the whole thing. Mm. But with trustees in place, an amazing board, that typical people that I know, that have gone, mm. no, Dan's a good guy, let's get this done. We don't have any middlemen. Right. So it's been perfect. There's, you, I mean, the biggest thing for me was we followed some trainers um, and a shipment to Kenya via, via internet and so, sort of like tracking. And we, pro, we uh, proposed that we would get the stuff out to the kids when it arrived. But we also knew that the fact that this, these containers would be stripped mm -hmm. as soon as they got to port of anything value. Yeah. So we made a decision that we would start shipping it out with people right. and they would go with stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we've raised over 6,000 pairs of shoes. Even wow. last year, I raised a thousand pairs during That's lockdown. That's fantastic. Um, 6,000 pairs of shoes, over a hundred thousand miles, four sport, uh, 100,000 miles, over 6,000 pairs of shoes, three, three countries, two continents, one opportunity. <laughs> And that's how barefoot, you know, me and my marketing yeah. from back in the day. Yeah. That's how we've kept afloat. Um, we've got international ambassadors. Every ambassador, pro player, or even young athlete, because I had that opportunity, so why should I not give it around? Um, nobody asked for anything. The boys who play in France pay for all the shipping over here. Mm. Um, and what we do to keep it afloat was we do high-value stuff. If, it, if it's worth it, we can't just give it over there. The kids get murdered for it. They'll yeah. get mugged. So we sell that on, and then the money comes in to keep cover. I mean, can't it's not a huge income, but it covers um, basic uh, shipping carriage if somebody's flying home, which that's mm -hmm. after spot during yeah. block. Right? So no, um, and, and we cover the basic things of storage, which has been right. based right. upon support and friends. Cheltenham Colleges, up the north, down south. Uh, friends have come along, said, I've got an empty house. Oh, people send people. Mm -hmm. And that's how the network's run. But Barefoot mm -hmm. just achieved so much. So three years ago, we flew four boys from Fiji mm -hmm. to Europe. They stayed for three months. It was like cool runnings <laughs> in the blizzard. The beast from the east hit that year. And then we brought two boys from Kenya from the two biggest slums in Kenya. Right. Never even been on a plane, never even seen the sea. Mm. So for me, that was my, 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 my vision. And we continued that. And now we've got Fiji, South Africa and Kenya on the go, we've got young ambassadors um, and recipients in those countries. Uh, it is absolutely brilliant, Danny, you know, and I, I think back, we, we haven't got very long left on the conversation, but I think back to the way we both started out our careers and the time we spent in room 101 at Worcester <coughs> College, you know, on the City and Guilds, Recreation and Leisure Studies and the Community Sport Leaders Award stuff that we did together, you know, and to be stood here talking in the way we are about, you know, charities in three different countries, it's outstanding, Danny. Thank you so much for your time. I'm going to put links to you um, in the in the tw in the posts that I put out so that people can try and find you, have a conversation if they want to, but just see some of the stuff you're doing. It's been fantastic, Danny. It's been just remember, remind people it's all about never about making much, but making a difference. Absolutely, it's all about making the difference. Thank you, Danny. You take care. We'll see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you.